This is an astonishingly cheap 1440p 180Hz mini LED gaming monitor. It retails for just £350, which would be on the cheaper end for just being a 1440p high refresh rate gaming monitor anyway, let alone having a mini LED backlight. This is the AOC Q27G3XMN, and this is a hopefully rather thorough review. Starting with the specs and claimed figures, AOC claims this bad boy has a one millisecond greater career response time. Yep, uh, a thousand nits of peak brightness, a delta E of less than two, and 98.5% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum. As for inputs, we've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, so no 2.1 here, which also means you can only get 144 hertz at most over HDMI, as well as one DisplayPort 1.4 port, which can do the full 180 hertz the monitor is capable of. As for the physical, design-wise, this still follows AOC's G2 and G3 line uh, styling, with a few red accents and otherwise a pretty inoffensive design. There's no RGB LEDs to be found, plenty of adjustment in the stand as you'd expect, and annoyingly, there's no joystick style switch for the OSD either. Instead, we have the cursed downward facing individual buttons. Interestingly, the OSD has actually been upgraded to AOC's newer design, albeit in black and white instead of red, and just a, just a painful thing to navigate using the under-slung uh, buttons. Still, all of the usual settings are there, including the four steps of overdrive that we'll be testing a little later, and for me, the most interesting setting here is the local dimming setting. This drops the brightness by quite a lot when you enable it to any of the three settings other than off, and even more interestingly, this isn't just an on and off setting. There are three other levels, or four including off. Essentially, the highest level strong is the full local dimming experience. Everything is, is as black as it can be when there isn't meant to be any light. The other two, less than 10 settings, basically just dim the backlight instead of turning it fully off. I guess this is, in theory anyway, meant to help blend the haloing in a little bit more, but in practice, I don't know why you would opt for either of those settings, or really anything other than off or fully on. Now, since we're already talking about the mini LED backlights, I should mention the key detail that will put this budget beast into context. This has 336 backlight zones. For context, Apple's mini LED displays have 2,500 zones, and a 1440p OLED has 3.686 million zones. Actually, technically it's 11 million zones because each subpixel has independent brightness control, but either way, you can see just how 336 zones over 27 inches of the display makes for a less than ideal experience. Haloing is pretty, no, it's really, really bad. On a black background, which I will admit is the worst case scenario, anything even remotely bright has just the widest outer glow I've seen on a mini LED display. This white bar has haloing twice its width on either side. What's worse is that with any level of motion, it flickers like crazy. Here is that bar in motion. The camera doesn't pick this up as well as your eyes would, but you can still see that flicker happening. Now imagine that that is 600 nits worth of flicker straight into your eyeballs. Yeah, it's not great. Personally, I would leave the local dimming mode off on this thing and just enjoy the great brightness that you get instead. Interestingly, it seems I can actually quantify that flickering. See, I ran my open source response time tool, specifically the newest ProCS model that you can pick up at osrt.com, by the way, with local dimming on strong, and caused some rather strange behavior. Here is one of those graphs. The backlight turns on uh, to about halfway between the two steps here, and it actually stays there for three frames before finally jumping up to the sort of set point that it's actually meant to be at. Uh, yeah. Here's another transition. 
this time a white to black one, and this is just all over the place. And uh, here's another one. Again, it takes three whole frames for it to actually turn the backlight on properly. And this isn't even going from full black, this is from RGB 51. Anything from actual black to fully on, it's instant and perfectly fine. But anything where the backlight is already on but seemingly dimmer, seems to take nearly 20 milliseconds to respond. It's really weird. So again, I would leave local dimming off on this one personally. One thing I am happy to report is that AOC has drastically improved the frequency that the mini LED backlight is controlled by. As a, a brief bit of context here, you generally have two options for how to control the brightness of an LED. Either just straight lower the voltage going to it, that's called DC control, or you can pulse the LED on and off for enough time to get the same light output, the same result. That's called PWM or pulse width modulation. The latter is generally worse as that flicker can be uncomfortable and just outright bad for your eyes. The faster that flicker is though, the less perceptible it is and the less bad it becomes. The last AOC mini LED monitor that I tested, the AG27 or uh, 274QXM, had a frequency of just 500 Hz. A completely unusable choice. Happily, this panel runs considerably faster. It's well into the thousands, uh, or possibly even tens of thousands of Hz, so it is much, much better. Great job, AOC. I should talk about response times with local dimming off anyway. With the overdrive turned off, the panel actually isn't too bad. It ran at 5.7 milliseconds on average, which is 175 hertz, meaning the native panel performance is exceptionally close to the maximum refresh rate. That's great news. Overdrive on weak, the lowest setting, drops the average to just 5.3 milliseconds, which is under the 5.56 millisecond refresh rate window, which is fantastic to see. My preferred overdrive mode by far though is medium, which drops the average to an excellent 4.1 milliseconds, making for a sharp, responsive and smooth visual experience with functionally no overshoot too. Lastly, we have the marketing modes, uh, sorry, uh, strong, <laughs> where technically the initial response time average does drop to an excellent 2.4 milliseconds, which is still nowhere near the one millisecond claimed, uh, but thanks to the horrible overshoot, you'll well, struggle to believe that, and the 5.1, uh, 5.4 millisecond perceived time uh, average feels a lot more accurate. In short, don't use this mode, use medium instead. As for input lag, I'm happy to report that that was spot on too, with very few results taking longer than one frame to display an input. That means that the gaming experience, especially when coupled with the pretty fast response times, is great. It's smooth enough to hit your targets, and quick enough to let you ban solo your opponents, and it's just an all around great type. While this isn't exactly an esports display, you certainly can play competitively on this, assuming you have the skill level to back it up. I actually really like how games look on this too, both in motion and just the straight vibrancy. The mini LED backlight really helps this pop. And as it turns out, that's because you get 650 nits of peak brightness here. And even with local dimming disabled, you still get an above average 5560 to 1 contrast ratio. Of course, with local dimming enabled, you get an infinite contrast ratio, although interestingly, you do get less measured brightness at 585 nits instead of 650. This is also considerably less than the 1000 nits AOC claim, although I suspect that that is with HDR on likely a small window size. The full screen SDR brightness at peak seems to be around 650 nits. As for colors, gamma coverage is great at 97% of the DCI-P3 spectrum or 76% of Rec 2020, and accuracy is top notch with a delta E of 1.03 on average in my testing. 
It does actually come with a, a calibration report in the box, so that's pretty nice. In general, content looks great on this. It's vibrant, rich, and more than bright enough for sure. The Q27 G3XMN is a glimpse into the future. Many LED backlights being this excessively cheap at just £350, at least at the time of filming in the UK, is amazing. In fact, at £350, like I said, it makes this a pretty cheap 1440p 180Hz monitor outright, even forgetting the backlight, so I'd argue that it's worth considering just on that alone. The response times and latency figures make it a great gaming experience, and when you add in the vibrancy and brightness, well, it's just a great shout. The local dimming, on the other hand, leaves a lot to be desired. With more zones, like 3000 instead of 300, it might be a better experience, and if they can get rid of the flicker too, that'd be great. But to me, this is just a peek into the future of LCD monitors. Mini LED backlights, at least to me anyway, are kind of a compromise uh, compared to an OLED, but with enough backlight zones, I think it keeps LCDs perfectly relevant, at least until OLED technology improves and generally more manufacturers are allowed to get into the business. If this is a sign of what's to come, I'm excited. And that's not to say that this isn't worth buying. It is, but not for the local dimming. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Q27 G3 XMN? Let me know in those comments. Also, if you do want to pick it up, there will be a link in the description for you. And if you want to pick up one of my open source response time tools to test monitors like this yourself, or one of my open source latency testing tools to test peripherals, games, and a load of other stuff, you can head to osrtt.com, and that's linked in the description as well. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one on a very regular basis, and you can check out plenty of other monitor reviews on the end cards when they pop up if they haven't already. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.